Hi, everyone. My name is Gabriel Altit. I'm a neonatologist at the Montreal Children's Hospital. And today it will be my pleasure to present on targeted neonatal echo and hemodynamics for the newborns at the McGill University Neonatal Conference, uh, Innovation and Technology in Neonatal Care. I would I just would like to thank uh, Dr. Guillerme Santana for inviting me to this wonderful conference and for the whole organizing committee for allowing me to uh, share a bit of my thoughts on the topic of TNE and neonatal hemodynamics. I have no disclosure rel relative to this presentation. My objective are to talk about some of the accessible neonatal hemodynamics and cardiovascular imaging learning tools usable in your practice. Uh, we will talk about uh, how this can be used in the clinical context and research uh, pertinent to the neonatal population. And we'll talk a bit about the work of the Neocardio Lab in the field of hemodynamics and neonatal echo. So first, let's start with some definition. Uh, targeted neonatal echo is uh, the use of cardiac imaging to complement uh, the care we provide in the NICU in order to assess real-time cardiovascular function, the pathophysiology to be addressed, to target some of the cardiac and cardiovascular interventions that we do, or to rule out some cardiovascular contributor to the disease that we uh, face in some of our fragile newborns, to evaluate if the treatment response is appropriate, and also to titrate therapies uh, related to the cardiovascular system, and to optimize effective organ perfusion. Um, this is really uh, as a way uh, to be in tandem of some of the cardiac care that is provided in our NICU. Uh, obviously, always in collaboration with our experts in pediatric cardiology. Um, the ECHO is one of the tools within the neonatal hemodynamics expertise, really not to evaluate structural defect, but really to provide uh, an assessment of uh, the function of the heart and the outputs, um, and really to help complementing the physical examination, the medical history, the vital signs, and some of the other radiological and biochemical investigations. And we know from the literature that we'll review uh, that TNE will alter management strategies in about 40% of hemodynamic consultation and in over 80% of cases with critical illnesses such as acute pulmonary hypertension and systemic shock. TNE has been around the block for more than 10 years. The first, the first expert consensus statement was published uh, in the Journal of American Society of Echo in 2011 and was reaffirmed and updated in 2024. So these are the references and we'll go through some of the elements that are outlined in these. Basically, uh, we know that there's various terminology sometimes to be that could be confounded uh, with TNE. Uh, so we often use TNE, TN echo, and in Europe, neonatologists perform echocardiography uh, as well as functional echocardiography in um, more of the uh, Australasia area. Um, more and more, there's been the use of point of care uh, ultrasound, but within it, the point of care echo, which will image the heart. Uh, but POCUS uh, will be discussed by a colleague of mine at the conference and really relates to the use of ultrasound uh, at the bedside for um, you know, most of the organs in order to complement your evaluation with really limited views in the context of the heart. Uh, TNE and hemodynamics is now a focused competence of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada and is recognized uh, as a licensing uh, training specialty for neonatologists uh, getting extra uh, training for a year in an accredited program and typically involves obviously to do an echo to derive important information, but to complement it with what's happening uh, at the level of the clinical evolution uh, of the critical critically ill neonate. So some of the indications for TNE include uh, the evaluation of the PDA, its effect, its directionality to inform on the relationship between the systemic and pulmonary compartment, uh, to evaluate the patient with cardiorespiratory instability, such as with sepsis, neck, hypovolemia, uh, tamponade, uh, in the context of particular disease processes like HIE or congenital diaphragmatic hernia, in the context of acute or chronic pulmonary hypertension, or even in situations where the pulmonary hypertension may be a bit more complex uh, and involves uh, situations with uh, flow mediation, like for example, in vein of gallon or AV malformation of the liver, uh, or in situ situation where you may have a post-capillary component where, for example, pulmonary veins may be affected or the left ventricle may be um, also uh, altering left atrial pressure. 
Uh, it's to assess also the cardiac function in the context of the response to initiation, titration, or withdrawal of either inotropes or vasopressors or other cardiovascular medications, and also can be used for line position. So this is from the recent statement uh, with many of the indications in which uh, TNE can help uh, benefit the prompt evaluation at bedside on a cardiovascular and hemodynamic status. And some of the indications have been listed on the right-hand side uh, that I've already mentioned in some of the previous slides. So these are some of the images in our own center of our population of patients in which we do TNEs. Uh, we do have a neonatal hemodynamic program that is growing as well as a training program that is working uh, in very tight collaboration with our pediatric cardiology service where we help complement some of the care at bedside and also use this tool for education and research. So these are some views where you can see uh, the parasternal long axis with the left ventricle. Uh, this is a short axis, which is a view from on top where we have the LV here and the right ventricle uh, sitting on top of the LV. And this is an apical four chamber view where we see the right ventricle, the left ventricle and the corresponding atriums on top. So we can have uh, TNEs done in the context of severe shock, where, for example, this premature baby had really profound biventricular dysfunction and used this to tailor the type of cardiovascular support, as well as uh, management of other elements, such as supplementing with calcium if there's hypocalcemia, adjusting the ventilator if this may uh, alter the afterload to the heart, uh, and really tailor the fluid management of these patients. This is an example of another patient where you see more of kissing ventricles and the cavity looking empty and the output being severely diminished, uh, secondary to hypovolemia and decreased preload. This is an example of a baby with a right to left shunt at the duct uh, and really a very dilated right ventricle uh, compressing my left ventricle in the context of acute pulmonary hypertension. And obviously, uh, you can use the different findings through your echo and based on your evaluation at bedside to tailor the type of treatments that you will do in order to modulate either systemic or pulmonary vascular resistance, as well as support the underlying cardiac function. Knowing that all the medications or strategy that we use at bedside uh, will come with drawbacks, so advantages and disadvantages, and the importance of using this extra tool to be able to uh, monitor the response of the patient and uh, tailor uh, the therapy with the best physiological information we can obtain. Uh, you can sometimes use this and rule out you know, dramatic events like tamponades. Um, so this is uh, one of the uh, example of a situation with tamponade. And we even have on the website of the new cardio lab, um, one of the workshops that we, we've been running and examples of how to drain the tamponade in an emergency uh, where the patients may be uh, in shock and eventually get um, a normal cardiac function and, and withdraw the PIC line, which might be uh, the culprit in this situation. So what about some of the literature where there's been mounting evidence that uh, TNE helps uh, providing adjustment in clinical management? Um, so this is just one of the study in one of our Canadian centers outlining that um, TNE consult uh, really helped uh, changing the management in about 40% of cases and actually avoided a certain planned intervention, which may not have been beneficial in 20% of cases. Um, this is one paper uh, coming out of New York where they used um, the actual TNE for UVC tip positioning uh, and one group in Toronto showing that uh, it could help also with a pick line tip position and avoiding x-ray exposures or at least secondary x-ray exposures. Uh, this is from our colleagues in Europe and Spain outlining that the results of TNE or functional echo actually uh, modify treatment in 37% of cases. And there's been mounting evidence that uh, TNE is able to change the management of cases with uh, cardiovascular contributors in 20 to 40% of time, uh, that it can result in less x-rays being done for the positions of central line, uh, that it seems to be very well tolerated by infants and even by extremely preterm infants, and that there's good concordance between neonatologists who are properly trained in TNE and hemodynamics and pediatric cardiologists, um, and that led to change in management. And so there's been more and more centers. This is the map of North America uh, outlining all the centers that do provide uh, access to targeted neonatal echo in 2019. And recently, um, 
there's been also papers from Europe outlining how uh, it is really a phenomenon that seems to grow throughout the world. Um, this is the recent map from the Neonatal Hemodynamic Research Center, which has outlined all the centers that have a membership to this global community of um, experts in neonatal hemodynamics. And I've listed all the centers on the left uh, that are provided through the NHRC uh, that are within Canada. And as you can see, uh, the majority of the tertiary care centers for newborns will provide a team with access to targeted neonatal echo evaluation for uh, uh, supporting the uh, management of critically ill newborns. At McGill, we also started our training program in 2020. Uh, this is a postdoctoral year where our fellows are learning to apply ECHO uh, in order to um, either use that as a tool for better management of patients as well as clinical research. This is really a great collaboration with our colleagues in pediatric cardiology, uh, which provide really support and training of these fellows and uh, mentorship. Um, and without them, this would not be a possibility. And we're seeking accreditation from the area of focus competence from the Royal College. Now, in terms of resources out there, if you're interested in getting more of a gist of the kind of uh, support or, or work that we do, this is the NeocardioLab website, which is a platform available for free on the web. It does have a whole section on targeted neonatal echo in which there are sections on uh, how to use uh, the echo probe, how to position it, what are the views, uh, and what each of these standardized views will provide you in terms of information, either um, in terms of the systemic compartment or the pulmonary compartment, the relationship between them, the outputs, um, and the use of that in order to either uh, better tailor therapy or follow therapies at treatment as well, um, as at the bedside, as well as use that in ways to better phenotype the patients in the context of, for example, either your research projects or quality improvement uh, projects. And so there are many resources on the website, uh, resources on functional echocardiography, on management, on inotropes, on measurements, on views, um, and on the different conditions that some of our newborns may face in the context of hemodynamics. There are also many calculators that are available out there such uh, in the website, such as the cardiac output calculator and tools for like central line position and pericardial effusion and tamponade um, and many other topics uh, that you could uh, scavenge through the website like congenital heart defect, uh, more for our pediatric cardiology colleagues um, and some of the research tools that we make available on the platform. So this platform has been used, uh, showing that there is a growing, growing interest in the field. Uh, we've had 170,000 views over the last two years, with more than 46,000 users from all across the world, and it's been a growing target. Uh, here you can see that there's been uh, more than 188 uh, countries represented in the visitors of the platform. And our calculators have also been used more than 5,000 times um, in order to implement some of the solutions that we propose on the website to complement the evaluations. Um, we have also made available uh, the content of the website through an application, both on uh, iOS and Android. Uh, here you can see there's been more than uh, 3,000 downloads of the um, iPhone application and more than 500, 600 downloads for the one on the Android store. Uh, and really it's free and from users from all across the world and it's been growing. A lot of the content is also in the format of videos providing support on, for example, nebology of the machines and how to recognize standard views and understand the views that you may see uh, to the more expert application, which are like views and measurements, which may be used in more advanced uh, t and &E practices or in the context of research. And all of these are available and free uh, via this platform. Of course, we have a family section. I, I want to spend just a few minutes to thank them for providing input and constant inspiration for why we do what we do in terms of both the academic teaching, the research, and the clinical practice. Uh, briefly, I want to speak about uh, Massimo, who is one of the participants to one of our projects in which a TNE was uh, uncovered that there was mild pulmonary hypertension at 36 weeks, and this patient was following cardiology and found to have following that very severe suprasystemic pH in the community at nine months. Um, and thanks to that, you know, um, research project in which he participated, he had the TNE and eventually uh, ended up uncovering that he had 
uh, some degree of pulmonary hypertension. And now this patient is completely free of disease and his lungs are completely recovered. And his parents are, are, are parent partners. They uh, inspire me in my research and, and the reason why I do what I do. Um, this was uh, his echo at nine months with severe suprasystemic pulmonary hypertension. And, and today he's really a little healthy boy and the parents are um, parent partners and involved in many of my research projects to provide output that may be important to study using this tool at the bedside and to integrate it in research. So, so this is just one example uh, that is a multi-centric uh, Quebec and the year with many collaborators within the Montreal Children, but also at outside institutes looking at um, the use of TNE and ECHO in the context of pulmonary hypertension screen and how uh, the information from their cardiovascular trajectory may help us better uncover uh, modifiable factors to prevent the occurrence of pulmonary hypertension prematurity. Um, and so many of my colleagues at the Children and in our TNECO Quebec col Collaborative have contributed to this project. And I really want to thank them and thank all the families that have been involved into it. This had eventually, uh, has eventually led to actually a pen provincial screening algorithm for all our patients with prematurity. So once we finished our study that is currently under a final data, data extraction um, for the echo portion, um, we developed a pulmonary hypertension clinical screening algorithm for which the TN echo team is responsible for. Uh, to flag patients at risk of pulmonary hypertension so that they're able to be tailored for follow-up uh, in cardiology in the outpatient setting. So this is just the gist of what targeted neonatal echo and hemodynamics can bring in terms of uh, clinical research and educational outputs. I want to thank all the organizations that have supported uh, my work at the Neocardio Lab. Um, and I really want to thank uh, the families for involving themselves and allowing us to be uh, better neonatologists and provide um, access to a lot of knowledge to the community. So uh, thank you for inviting me and uh, I'm open for questions uh, or comments and I uh, wish you a wonderful conference. I have put my contact information as well in case uh, you would like to reach me out for questions.